Matthew chapter 6 verse 16 still in the Sermon on the Mount moreover when you fast so we've been talking about prayer talking about fasting uh, alm giving when you fast <coughs> be not as the hypocrites We've seen it in the, the Sermon on the Mount, we've seen a lot of things hypocrites do. And they're in your church. And you got to realize, not everybody in church is saved. Not everything everybody does in church is to please God. Sometimes they do things because they want to please themselves or others. There are men in the pulpit. They're only in that pulpit because they want people to look at them. Of a sad countenance, and that's the face. You make your face look sad. The countenance of the face is you can tell. You can almost tell how they're feeling. You can tell by the countenance of somebody they walk in the room that has a surprise party for them. You can tell by the, the countenance of the face when a doctor delivers bad news. When the doctor says to the woman and her husband, you're pregnant. For they disfigure their faces. That they may appear unto men to fast. They're not fasting. They look like it. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And what their reward is, they're deceivers and liars. And we see this over and over. These people put on prayers and put on fasting and put on alms. They'll be deceivers, liars. They're not real. They're fake. But thou. Okay, now. This is how you do it. When thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. All right, get up in the morning, wash your face like you do. If you shave or trim your beard, trim and do your beard. If you put a little lotion on your face, whatever you do, comb your hair. In other words, do what you're doing today in a fast, what you did yesterday when you weren't fasting. That thou appear not unto men to fast. Try not to have an attitude. Try not to be grumpy. But unto thy Father, capital F, which is in secret. And thy Father, God, capital F, which sees thee in secret, will reward thee openly. So, what we've seen so far, for every person that, that does right, there's somebody who's a counterfeit. Lay not up yourselves treasures upon the earth. Gold, silver, stocks, bonds, doodads, cars, boats, houses. Whatever a treasure is. And treasures is a broad sense of a word because, I mean, there's all kinds. There's there's sports cards, there's stuffed animals, there's posters, there's money, there's coins, there's stamps. Now, it's okay to have things to make a living. Where moth and rust does corrupt. They decay, they rot. Especially when you die. I know of two men right now. One has died. The other one's in a nursing home. And their house is just rotting. Their, their stuff is just rotting. And in fact, one house has been claimed that people went in and stole the valuable stuff of his. And there's nothing he could do. He was in a nursing home. Is that your God? I 
love it. Uh, there's a TV show I watch, uh, Dragnet. One of the episodes I got, you know, where Jesus gets stolen. <laughs> you, if your Jesus can get stolen, judges, that ain't Jesus. You know, Micaiah says, you know, he's stolen my gods. Well, those gods in the Catholic Church are going to crumble, rumble, rot. You get that big earthquake they say that, you know, California is due for. Well, you're going to see a lot of those statues rot and crumble. Those cars. There's many people that got all these suspensive cars. They rot. They rust. Where thieves break through and steal. Again, it, it, if someone can take it, but lay up yourselves treasures in heaven. There is a heavenly bank account. There is a vault in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt. For the Christian... It's gold, silver, and precious stones and crowns. Where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. There's no thief. There's no moth. There's no rust in heaven. But where your treasure is, okay, whatever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And you can primary tell somebody by their checkbook. Anybody who looks at the spending of their checkbook can tell where your heart is. The light of the body is the eye. And you got the lust of the eyes. You got to be careful what light you put into your eyes, television, and the computer. And to realize that there is only one doctor in the world that can look into you. And see, the closest thing to your soul, it's not your heart doctor. Heart doctor opens you up, he's going to see blood and muscle. If the brain doctor opens you up, he's going to see muscle and blood. If the shrink opens you up, he's going to just get a lot of talk. The optometrist, when he looks into your eyes according to Jesus, when they, they tell you, if you want to tell if somebody's lying to you, if they cannot look at you straight into your face, they're looking around the room, that's a good cause that they're not telling the truth. I used to have my mom when I was a child growing up, she would look at me when she wanted an answer. Eyes right here. Did you do it? And if you're guilty, your eyes are going to go. So what Jesus is saying is the light of the body. If the light goes in your mouth, it goes down as far as your throat, maybe that's it. It don't get far in your ears, and I don't want to get to any other orifices of your body. Your nose, it don't go so far. If therefore thy eye be single, We'll see what, sing, what the single means in verse 24. But if thy eye be single, if it be one, you got two of them. Wait. Thy whole body shall be full of light. 
But if thy eye be evil, so the opposite of single is evil in the context. The whole body is full of darkness, opposite of light. So you can bring in light into your eyes, to your body. Or you can bring in evil. And as a result of the evil, you can fill your body with darkness. It Therefore, the light that is in thee be dark. And what it's saying is, in the replacement of light, you got darkness. Because light is not dark. You should have light going in your eyes. But instead of light, if you got darkness going into your eyes, evil. This is the trouble with video games. What can be wrong with a video game where I'm driving a car fast and stealing cars and fancy dancy women and all that? Or video games, I'm shooting people, bang, bang, bang. What, what harm can that do? It's going into your heart and going into the eyes, into the heart. Pornography goes into your eyes and into your heart. Not your head. So when the light is darkness rather than light, how great is the darkness? Now, the singleness. No man can serve two masters. And I've had, I've had jobs. My very first job, I had a manager and two assistant managers. I had a job where, where there were two men and they were the owners, both of them. And you get in a grocery store, like I've been in, you got multiple bosses. You got the store manager, and you got the department manager, you're over, and then you got maybe your, your department, uh, well, not department, I already said that. You got another manager over. Some people have one manager, one boss. Other jobs have two. You cannot serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. And it's, I had that, you know. If I had more than one manager, I can't stand that person. That guy's good. I hope that guy's working tonight with us. I hope that guy's on my ship. I hope I get to see him more than I get to see that one. And you're going to have a level of, I like, I don't like. And you're not going to please both of them because both of them are two different beings. Two different standards. Or else you will hold to the one and despise the other. I said that. So with the eye being single, you don't want the eye serving light and serving darkness. You can't have it. You can't have what we just read. You can't have a treasure that's in the earth and a treasure that's in, the, in heaven. You cannot have both. Somewhere along the line, your treasures is going to be whether you're going to go in that cruise you love, and, oh, it's on a Sunday. Or you're going to serve the Lord and be in church. Oh, I, I, I love baseball, and our team is playing home, on, and that happens to be a church night. Well, you love baseball, you love the Lord. Who gets it? The light. I know. I, I've seen this in 
well, you know, that television show, you know, it's just been, you know, you know, series after series. I, I got to miss church this week because I got to see whatever it is. Fill in the blank. You're either going to go for heaven or the earth. Now, Jesus said about the last thing you see in church, there, there are some are hot, I love it. Some are cold, not so happy. There are some are lukewarm, and that makes God sick. He vomits. You know, you're the Christian on Sunday morning, and you're the devil Monday to Saturday night, or the next Sunday morning. Haven't we been talking about the hypocrite? And that's the people, that's some of the people in your church. That may be some of the people in the offices of the church, whether they be teacher, whether they be music, whether they be in the office, whether they be the pastor or the associate pastor themselves. It may be you. No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one or love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise it. Now here we go. We're going to sum this up. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now mammon is a money value. It is... A particular treasure of finances that Paul will say the love of money, not the love of money, the, the, the love of money. That sower went out and he put the seed out. The cares of the world and the pleasures and all that choke the word. Here in Florida, when one of the, the, the phrases of COVID-19 was lifted, I remember seeing the videos and seeing, and I've heard some of the people say, the highways to, long, to Walt Disney World was, it was a parking lot. It did not move. But the school, but the schools, the, the churches were empty. Okay? We love the rat more than we love God. When your children are all happy waiting for the Easter bunny, waiting for the Santa Claus, waiting for the trick-or-treat, waiting for the tooth fairy, more than they're waiting for Jesus. Your children have foretold in your house who your master is. You cannot serve God and love money. Wealth and treasures. Have, you cannot have one foot in the ground and one foot in heaven. You can't have it. Because in time, that one foot in the, in the world and one foot in heaven, somewhere along the line, that one of them feet has got to give. Because NASCAR races every Sunday. Baseball has at least a couple games on Sunday and midweek service. Football plays every Sunday. 
Your child's Little League will be during the week. You will have a daughter's ballet recital on a Sunday or a Wednesday night. That cruise will interrupt a Sunday or a midweek service. And I, I know one fan, they always went on the cruise. I said, are there church services on that cruise on Sunday? No. Now, you may be a hypocrite to man. You may have everybody fooled in church, whoever, whatever position you are. They may think you're the greatest, you may think you're the goodness. How well you are. But God does not have you fooled. And I don't know how close the bank looks at your check, your checkbook. I don't know if they look at if they do. If they do, they can tell who you and where you stand. Your Bible will tell you where you stand. How worn out your Bible is. I mean, you can be a King James Bible believer, not even open it up. 